There's no rule that says that hoppy beers, hoppy ales, have to be India or pale. Sometimes they're red. Take, for instance, uh, Double Mountain's IRA, which I drank last year sometime. Or this, Cascade Lake's Red Haze, Hazy, Hazy Red Ale. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Back when I was first learning about beer and developing an appreciation for beers, I discovered I preferred malt characters to hop characters. Um, I liked amber ales. I liked Irish red ales. Um, darker malts. Uh, medium malts. And those were just kind of the, the things that I first found an enjoyment in or appreciation of as I was exploring beer. Going back historically, the kind of beer building, um, the English bitter, that thing, however you describe it, it's a brown ale, and you don't really see English bitters anymore advertised as such. Instead, you find that malty, earthy, hoppy beer found more commonly in the modern amber style, which in a large, to, to a significant extent, is simply a rebranding of the English bitter, or the brown ale. Um, this being labeled a red haze, a hazy red ale, I'm expecting it to be a Northeast style uh, India blank ale with a more pronounced hop character. Typically speaking, India pale ales have very pale malts, hence, well, to be an India Pale Ale, it has to be a pale malt and an ale form, and then it's typically mixed with, or brewed with a significant amount of hops. To be a red ale, it's no longer a pale ale, so it cannot be an IPA, though sometimes you'll see cans labeled as a red IPA or even a black IPA, in which case it would be a black ale or a hopped black ale or a harp, hopped dark ale would be more appropriate names. Nowadays, you'll see some of those black um, black IPAs called Cascadian Dark Lagers um, as a, a way to be more specific and correct in their naming, though there's also arguments over how that should be named. The thing that can be agreed on, though, is that it's not a pea pale ale because it's not pale malts, right? So this is not pale malts. This is red or brown malts that are being used to produce this brown character. As I've explained before, darker beers usually are darker because the grains have been roasted longer, and that produces flavors like toast or sometimes uh, burnt marshmallow. Approaching chocolate, but definitely to the lighter side of that, not quite down to dark malts. You're still looking at brown and red malts. And so you're going to expect a, like, bready character, toast, um... Maybe even some meatiness, depending on the construction of the beer. And those malts will be more present simply because they have more flavor on their own. A pale malt often exists to serve the other ingredients of the beer, whereas a brown or amber malt has its own purpose, has enough body in itself that it produces its own character in the beer in sufficient quantities. Mix together a strong hop character and a strong malt character, and you tend to have a very interesting beer. Personally, I find these an approachable way to get into IPAs in general or hopped beers as a style because you have this more familiar, broadly enjoyable toast, roasted malt character, and then you're bringing in these less familiar or possibly less appreciated so far hops to that. Anyways, all that preamble out of the way, let's see how this one stands up. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I am smelling the... I'm smelling the hops. They're there. A little bit to the soft side. Slightly tropical. I really should study hops and start understanding what they're different. You know, trying to, trying, trying to identify the hops by their aromas. But the hop aroma is there. And there's a slight nuttiness, which I would expect. It, 
nuttiness would be another character common to amber or brown ales. So there's definitely a nuttiness in there. That's that's interesting. Let's see how it tastes. Um, frankly, there isn't a whole lot to the to the nose on this. I mean, it's there. It's just it's there's not a lot. Sticking it all the way in, there's maybe a hint of um, apple juice and maybe a sorghum. That's interesting. It's reminding me in some ways of the uh, gluten-free, some of the gluten-free beers I've tried. But <laughs> we all know who that, how that turned out. <laughs> Let's drink this and see what it's like. Mmm, nutty. Definitely. Um, the hops are there. The finish is mostly like a, a dry peanut butter, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, okay. This is interesting. So, Northeast IPAs, hazy IPAs. You expect them to be tropical, mellow, kind of soft, maybe a little bit sweet. Those characters are in here. They're definitely more present to the taste, to the tongue, than they are to the nose. Might be because there's a breeze outside, blowing the head away too quickly, whatever. Um, I'm not in a hermetically sealed, carefully controlled tasting environment. Ugh. But what you get with this is a nutty, not really toasty, definitely nutty, um, like soft nuts. Maybe um, hint of walnut pecan, um, maybe even cashew, and then that fades to like a, a peanut butter. But then over it you get this really interesting mild tropical hoppiness, a la Hazy IPA. It's interesting. It's very interesting. They're not battling the two flavors, but at the same time, I don't know that they are tied together particularly well. Yeah. I find myself really wanting the crispness of a pale, a paler malt with this. Uh, I wonder, I mean, I've had hopped, strongly hopped red ales, the IRA by Double Mountain, I believe I found to be a quite an interesting beer. I would have to look it up. I'd have to remind myself from that video. Um, it's definitely interesting. It's very interesting. It's not unpleasant. It's not bad. It's not a bad beer. It's a very interesting beer. It's soft. It's mellow. The, the nuttiness is not sharp or, or um, drying or anything like that. And then the combination with the tropical hops makes for a just a very unexpected, very... Very interesting flavor. I mean, I don't know what else I can say to that. It's just, it's it's an interesting beer. It's a very interesting beer. Kudos to them for trying, right? Um, I would wonder if a if a brighter hop might might um, or d more dominant hop might just cause the nuttiness to disappear entirely. And so I wonder if on the other side going for malts that had more character on their own, a, more, a brightness of their own, maybe even incorporating some rye, um, might produce a malt that stands up better and then pro provides a counterpoint to the smoothness of the tropical hops. I just wonder, just, you know, thinking out loud. Um, yeah. And I think I'll have to think some more. <laughs> Anyways, this is me, Matthew, drinking and enjoying the Cascade Lakes Brewing Company's Red Haze, a hazy red ale. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>